Good morning, everybody. Look at us, we're in a van. Um, we're going to our friend's place to pick up, uh, well, to deliver a box to them so they can um, put their separate chicken, separate their baby broody chicken things and whatever. And um, it's, it's Ian and Fiona at um, Quinta das Brisas, uh, the little yeah, Airbnb. We'll put, the Airbnb. Link, we'll put, the we'll put a link of their Airbnb below. Um, I have featured it in the video, and it's a lovely place. So. So we came down to uh, Quinta das Brisas to pick some elderflowers for elderflower champagne that Andrew's going to make. Unfortunately, the flowers uh, were, were too late. They finished flowering and they're now turning to berries. So yeah, we're like a few days too late. Uh, never mind. Next year. And look what Ian and Fiona have got. <laughs> Hello everyone, so uh, first little job I'm doing today, I can show you how, to, how we prepare the ground for squashes, well I do most of the squashes, so um, yeah it's quite sort of specific but uh, I'll show you a little feature we have here. So basically this pipe runs from our outdoor shower yeah and it, and it just runs out and basically runs out onto here so I'll just instead of having the water over there pooling up I'll put a pipe in a piece of pipe I find and the water for the outdoor shower comes here well this time of year we're gonna be using the outdoor shower a lot a lot more yeah so what I thought was if we plant squashes along here that almost don't need to water them because they're you know the shower gets used every day so that will water them uh, so that's the idea. So I'm going to dig a trench here and show you how we prepare for squashes because they need lots of food. So as you can see I've dug a trench now about a metre long, 300 mil deep, so let's say three foot by a foot. I'll clean that out a little bit and then add premium pig poo. <coughs> well, um, I'll, I'll put the poo in there up to about three inches of the surface, then we'll top it off with a bit of soil and then we'll plant the, I think we've got gem squash and we'll plant gem squash in the top of there. And then, like I say, for the water from the outdoor shower, can water them, so we'll hardly need to water them at all. Or? No, in the, in the soil. soil. 
So as you can see, I put the uh, pig poo in, cover it over with a bit. My glamorous assistant is coming with the water. I'm just going to water the top of that, and then uh, I'll plant. I've extended it obviously because um, my glamorous assistant got involved, and <laughs> so it's it's uh, more than what we thought because we got more squash than what we thought. So there we go. So there we go, uh, water them in, final water in, but that's one, two, three, four, five, seven in there. Uh, I put my old foot apart, a foot deep trench, lots of poo, and uh, then mulch the top with, a, with our chippings that we, from the um, cork oaks. And there we go. It's a lovely gem squash. So the next thing we're planting out, and just uh, sorting out the fruit here. But the next thing we're planting out are potatoes. For some reason, I mean, we've got. I'm doing all my potatoes in tubs, as I've said before. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tubs already, which are growing really well, as you can see. Yeah, but. Um, those raspberries, golden raspberries. Yeah, the six tubs we've got obviously won't be enough for us. So we're doing a few tubs more, but the potatoes have only just chitted. These are Romano potatoes, and they've only just got these little chits on them. We like to plant them whole without cutting them or anything. And uh, yeah, so these are only just about now ready to go and it's the end of May. But um, we've got now six pots with holes in the bottom and this is our top quality compost from our own compost heap so we know this is really good stuff to grow in so I like to put four or five inches in the bottom of the pots and then um, we'll put four or five potatoes in in there yeah and then uh, cover them with soil from where the chickens have been digging so it's all good yeah so just gonna put one, two, uh, one in the middle. It's probably more than the what's needed, but you know we've got to get them in, and they'll grow. They'll be fine. Put, how many is that? Six. There we go. And then just cover them with soil. Hey. Okay. You what? 
filming. Oh, you are now? Okay. So yeah, we've just um, <coughs> just cut these off with about, I don't know, four or five inches of soil, 100 mil of soil. And then every time they poke their little heads through, we'll add a bit more soil. That uh, encourages them to keep, keep pushing out the potatoes. I won't water these now because I want to water the blueberries at the same time. So I'll um, we'll put the sprinkler here and we'll water everything later on. Advantage of having a long handled shovel. <laughs> all the way over there. <laughs> this is from underneath the hazel tree, so it's got bits of twigs and stuff in it. There's also bits of hazel in there, hazel nut. It's good organic, good organic matter. Who said you could use my wheelbarrow? Hey? Who said you could use my wheelbarrow? It's for gardening purposes. Ah, okay. Look. Old hazelnut. <coughs> well, there's potatoes. So here we are, another day at uh, Cindy Vine's place. Um, just done a bit more. Yeah, so we've done. I've done a bit more to the wall just to finish off the top of it here. Tidies it up. We need to build this end up, as we know, but that'll happen over time. So Cindy can fill these bits in with cordwood. And we've had <coughs> Carissa and Ewan have turned up. Carissa's been titivating the garden here. Uh, everything's looking lovely. Just helping out Cindy. And then, um, oh, we've got yeah. more potatoes. Yes. And Ewan and Carissa have always also been down the bottom here. Ewan strimmed all this area for Cindy, cleaned up all her grapevines and all her fruit trees here. They've started putting the irrigation pipes on, so that, that'll be a big help for her. And Andrew's been uh, cement washing the wall and washing off the cement off the oh. beams, old cement off the beams here. So yeah, uh, it's half done, so that can be painted when it dries out. Well done, Ange. So like I said, I've done a little bit more here on this corner, but I've done something a bit special for Cindy. I've shaped a stone. So we've got a stone here, shaped like Africa. There's just a little horn bit missing off here, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So it's right by the back door. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground
falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Even if the sky is falling down So, as you can see, I'm cracking on with the plaster board, guys. Uh, got a little bit to do over here, and a little bit to do over here, and then that's all the ceiling done. And then I can start the walls and our new, uh, with our new system. You're going to love it. And just popped in to see me. I'm going to go and see what she's been doing. And here she is. Doing a marvellous job, as usual, of picking cherries. How's it going? Well, just reaching it. I mean, we've got one or two, so... Uh... One or two. We only have six or seven trees. But as you can see, this one... is quite large. Another one there, right beside the house. And uh, there's quite a few on it. Okay, everyone. So we've uh, we've had the electrician in. Um, had the electrics done. So for a plug down here, and in the other corner, and a few other things. Um, that's all good. Um, now, I want to show you, we've got insulated plasterboard to go on the walls, on these walls, yeah? Uh, let me turn it around. So, like I said before, these walls will all be uh, insulated plasterboard because this is south facing and these do actually get quite warm. Here's our board, we've got 20mm of insulation on the inside, closed cell um, polystyrene, basically. And what I've done is I've cut one to size, as you can see, this is the off cut. And this is the one that's going up against the wall. I'll just show you how I'm going to fix it, which is fascinating. Okay, so here goes. Uh, basically, I've cut it, cut it to height. Um, I'm just going to pull it out so you can see the other side of it. Like so. Uh, there are a couple of bits of this concrete from the previous um, work done here that's sticking out. So what I've done is just use a blowtorch, probably shouldn't, but uh, just use a blowtorch to melt the polystyrene a bit so where these bits are sticking out it, it makes a hole in the polystyrene, yeah? No problem. So what I'm using to stick, basically you could drill and fix through but you know you need, it's difficult to do that with with these type of sheets but the method I'm using is this stuff um, not sponsored by any make or anything but it's PU adhesive um, foam yeah so right it's it's adhesive expanding foam it doesn't expand very much but it uh, it sticks anything to anything um, this is good for let me read it and, and translate it at the same time uh, Yeah, basically anything it touches to anything it touches. Um, it's really good stuff. I've got some here, which is the same type of stuff, but this was used for tiles, but it's it's still um, um, polyurethane adhesive, so it'll be fine. Basically, then what we need to do is any concrete concrete bits will spray with water because believe it or not, PU foam loves to be a bit damp. It reacts and goes off a lot better when things are a bit damp. Some reason. 
So we're spraying all the concrete down. I know it, it sort of it doesn't make sense to, to get this wet and then put a foam to try and glue things together, but believe me, if it's damp it works so much better. <coughs> we won't bother with this because it's not going to absorb any water anyway. So basically all you do is Nearly empty. It's just going to be a bit slower because it's nearly empty, it's just taking its time to run out. Oh, hello. In here is nearly empty. What I like to do when you're changing the cans on these things, so these are pistol, obviously a John pistol grade cans. What I like to do is do it in a rubbish bag. Um, take, you can squeeze the trigger and unscrew the can at the same time. Unless it's all together. Or I should get a right mess. And screw the new can on. And that'll go off the fine right. Finish this. Obviously this one's a different colour. Colour makes no difference. The same stuff. Stop, stop, stop. No minimus. So I'm going across it. I'll just finish it up. Spray it too fast, it all comes off, yeah. got the adhesive on the board just a simple thing I've kept it two inches away from the edge all the way around the next thing to do is just push your board against the wall without getting it all over your hands
Um, And if I have something to prop against it, in place or two, well, I think it's not going to be playing very nicely. There. And that's it, basically. So, as you can see, I had to cut the window out of this one. Unfortunately, it fell over. And the top bit broke off, but because uh, it got a bit delicate, a bit too thin. But um, so I've sprayed the wall again, and uh, I'm just going to film me putting this piece on. But so that sheet's been up there ten minutes now. Went like the time it took me to cut that out. And That's solid. Hmm. Pretty quite, good. Quite pleased with it. So again, we'll do the same. There's something wrong with my phone gun. It won't stop spraying, which is great. A couple of inches in from the edge. This isn't expanding foam, this is adhesive foam, yeah? It does expand a tiny little bit, but nothing very much. But it does stick to nearly everything, including me, all my arm hair. <laughs> You've got to get the thickness in the application just right, or if you get too much it rolls off and yeah. Just nice and steady. Nice colour. It's like a peach. Yeah? A peach, that colour? Hmm. What's wrong with this thing? Try and clean your gun. I think that's half the problem. Put it over there. Yeah, like I said, it, it's really odd to be spraying water on something you're trying to stick something to, but that's the way it works. Again, I use my trusty spirit level prop. <laughs> Just too long, man. I'll just do this by hand. Then. Okay. 
Just make sure you don't splash. And literally it takes like five minutes to go on. So there we go everyone. This is uh, one, two, three sheets. Three sheets on that wall. Um, I've used about a can full of foam. With cans cost about 10 euros. So uh, what's that? Three, six, that's nine square meters. Probably eight square meters to be honest from a can stuck on the wall. Now this is insulated plasterboard. You can also get just plain plasterboard and you can do exactly the same stuff. But with that the um, the foam that you stick it on with will also be a, a little bit of an insula insulating layer really. So um, yeah, win all round. You can't do this on the ceiling unfortunately because it all falls down. Uh, not that I've tried it. But what you can do. So what I will do is cut strips of plasterboard to go in, in the sides here. I'll cut a strip for the sill and a strip for the head of the window here. These are reveals by the way, that's what they're called. So the reveals are cut, you know, and I'll just foam them on exactly the same way. But just the ordinary plasterboard are not insulated because obviously it's going against insulation as you can see. So yeah, that'll be just a plasterboard edge there. And then I'll just um, tape, tape the joints with um, special fiberglass self-adhesive tape called scrim tape. And then I'll just... Um, just put a feather of filler in there because if you notice these boards are what they call feathered edge uh, how can I explain that here not very well yeah not too bad so see this board it's 12 mil thick and it feathers off to about 10 there yeah so then when you butt another one up against it you have a hollow which you put tape along and then fill in the hollow and then you don't then you can paint directly on this cardboard so you don't have to plaster the whole thing. It's a, it's a quick and easy way of doing it. It's the modern way, as they say. Yeah, so there, quite pleased with that. Literally, the joints and the windows around to do, and then I'll just carry on through here. Uh, I've got three cans, so that should be more than enough. And then what I'll do with the gaps, because obviously the room isn't square, as you can see, I'll fill these gaps with just ordinary expanding foam, all the way around these gaps, yeah, and then cut it off flush, and then this, this is the tapered edge again, so I'll just fill in the tapered edge. I'll put some tape in the corner and just fill that in with with uh, basically board filler. So guys, quite pleased with this, uh, going really well. Let's go and see what Andrew's doing in the kitchen. Hi babe, what you up to? I'm making it because it's cherry season. Right. And, uh... I'm going to make a cherry bake wheel tart. Cool. So I've just got the base here. So, what's that? It's soft butter mm -hmm. with sugar, which are creamed together, then added the flour, and I'm now just mixing it together roughly and about to dump it in here, like so. And as you know me, get it all out of the bowl. Cherry bake well. Yeah. Recipe in the description, guys. In the description below. So, just a grease proof line tray. It's, I need to get a proper spoon as opposed to because it sticks like a to this one. Like something to blankets. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it might look a little bit. A hit and miss in here but it will as it cooks it does sort of spread itself out a bit better than I can. <laughs> so it's sticking we'll, to everything. I know. So that's going to go in the oven until it's like a light little base. While that's happening I've got to show you this. So this is a cherry pitter. Go on and demo. Cherry? Yeah in the hole, <laughs> through the cherry out because I forgot to put a bowl underneath. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Cherry in the hub. Okay, show us then. Move your hand. I've got to hold it down. Oh, right. Oh, well, I'm in the wrong place then. Okay, it is. Cool. It's 
lost my toy. Was that a birthday present for you? No, I, I think it was. <laughs> so, or wheelbarrows. Christmas, Christmas, wheelbarrows and, yeah. and cherry pitters. So even though there's a hopper here, if I put fill up the hopper, it generally sort of blocks it up because it just it's just easier to grab a handful and shove them in like so. We've got quite big cherries, so they do seem to uh, work quite. Oh, or they go straight through like that. So there's more eggs and oh, eggs, sugar and butter, and then I need to add some eggs. So in goes an egg. So sugar and butter. Yeah. Not almond. No, sugar and butter in this bit. Right. Okay. Sorry. And then with the egg, because in this bowl I have almond flour and normal flour. Okay. So you put a bit of the egg in, and then you chuck a bit of this in, just to try to stir it all in together. says to do, do a bit at a time. Separate or something? Sorry? Will it separate or something? I have no idea. <laughs> Hard one. Can you fall? No, it wasn't actually. Oh. I have got a guinea fowl leg coming up. <laughs> Cherry jam, homemade. We spread a nice load of that on here. It's a bit. This one wasn't overly, didn't set overly well. I think it was perhaps too many cherries or something. It's just pure cherries almost. But I should be making some more again this year, so oh, we'll have the whole jar. Trying to get this to spread will be fun, but get there. Right on, we shove the cherries in. Shove? Is yeah. that a technical word? It's it's a very technical word. Okay. Now, I've pitted all these ones because that's how many I, I had picked. Um, so, basically, uh, I'm just going to place them delicately throughout. Shove them in there, you mean? Yeah, shove them in the battery stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think there's much of a sort of cherry overkill with this recipe at all. <coughs> you used a whole pot of jam? Yeah, but it's... My own homemade jam, so it's, you know, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, very true. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So, hopefully.
hopefully this should rise up a little bit and sort of encase the cherries. That's the idea anyway. Yes, as you can see, I've pitted far too many, so they'll have to be used for something else. But What? Hang on, what's that there? What's what? what the? Oh, that. <laughs> uh, I've just got a few almond flakes as well, just to sprinkle on top. Cool. And that then goes in the oven. So For how long? Uh, about 30 to 40 minutes. 30 to 40 minutes in the yeah. oven. Ideal. Okay. okay. Okay, everyone, that's it for this Tuesday. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your likes and subscribes. And just, uh, yeah, all your comments and everything have been amazing. We think we've identified the plant. Um, and I had no reaction, no rashes or anything. So it's probably not hemlock. So it's all good. Um, it's not hemlock. No, it's no, not hemlock. It's not Definitely hemlock. not hemlock. So that's all good. Um, yeah, thanks oh, just a quick that. note as well. Um, Steve and Natalia from uh, Portuguese Quinta Garden Culinaria We'll put a link in our description. They're doing now two two uh, cookery shows a week and they are amazing. So Yeah, yeah um, they I'm sort of yeah, I just throw things in and see what happens, but uh, these guys do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all you know traditional Portuguese recipes. So yeah, give them a look up um, Portuguese Quinta Garden Culinaria. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and on that note I'm going to have some uh, cherry bake roll in about half an hour. Yeah, not yet. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay. Moment of truth. Oh, cherry bake roll, cherry bake roll, cherry bake roll. Does that doesn't look too bad at all, does it? What do you think? Not a bad effort, darling. When that stops bubbling. Yeah. Oh. It's hot jam. It will burn. When it stops bubbling, it's going in my belly. <laughs>